Since 1944, NSF, through partnerships, science-based research, and independent certification, has sought to promote sustainable practices and improve public health globally. It's a beautiful, partly sunny day. I don't know where the sun is right now, here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. In this interview, we will talk to NSF President and CEO Pedro Sancha and VP of Food and Nutrition Sarah Kroll about the influence and reach of the company in the present day. I feel honored to have the opportunity to lead an organization that has played such an outsized role in protecting public health and the environment for 80 years, but I feel we're just getting started. From ensuring the safety of the world's water systems and food supply chains, to enabling the development of life-enhancing products and technologies, NSF continues to have a critical impact on our daily lives. Sarah, the same question for you. Your, 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 where does your passion lie when it comes to this huge, huge undertaking here well, at NSF? Well, I've been with the organization for 18 years now, and over that time, science has changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. So NSF still has a lot of work ahead of us in terms of implementing food safety systems around the world, and I'm all in on that mission. Sure, sure, sure. So we are here, and Pedro, we'll, we'll start with you. What, what exactly is NSF, and what is your core mission? Well, let me put it this way. I'm willing to bet that most of our viewers have never heard of NSF. However, I can assure you that as we speak, we're working behind the scenes to keep them safe and healthy. What are the things that keep people alive? Is food, is water, and is health products. So what we do is we leverage science, innovation, and partnerships to enable safe and sustainable food, clean water, and life-enhancing products through standards development and independent testing and certification. For instance, NSF ensures the water we drink is safe by testing and certifying our water systems from source to tap. NSF works with the major grocery stores and your favorite restaurant to make sure the food has been produced and handled safely from farm to fork. And when you a buy dietary supplements, organic or non-GMO food, the NSF logo gives you the peace of mind that what you're putting in your body is what's written on the label. So I think it's fair to say that where it matters most, you can find NSF. And NSF was not born yesterday. Congratulations on 80 years. That is a, a, a great feat. Uh, talk to us about some of the big, the big highlights, the big achievements, and this ongoing legacy. Mm -hmm. Time flies, so NSF was founded in 1944 by a group of scientists at the University of Michigan who saw an opportunity to develop consistent science-based hygiene and sanitation standards. And these founders understood that public health is a team sport. So what they did is they put together in a room experts from government agencies, consumer groups, and manufacturing companies, and they asked them to sort it out. Now fast forward, and NSF guidelines have become the gold standards in food and nutrition and water safety globally. And we've grown from three people to 5,000 experts serving 40,000 clients across all continents. And as the world evolves, NSF continues to innovate to keep people and planet healthy. For instance, everyone should be able to trust what's in the water. So we're working right now to address one of the most pressing concerns in water safety, which is the presence of PFAS, or so-called forever chemicals, in our water systems. Also, the consumption of dietary supplements has skyrocketed in the last 10 years. Who doesn't like the gummy vitamins? Well, NSF has developed the only consensus standards for the dietary supplements industry. You mentioned drinking water, and, and I suspect that that is on the top of the NSF uh, list, along with a, a lot of other efforts. Uh, talk about your efforts, specifically when it comes to um, ensuring and securing uh, safe water for everyone on this planet. That's a big, big task. It is. Yeah. Because water is essential to life. It's the most precious resource we have on this planet. So NSF has been pioneering water safety since the 1960s. Back then, people thought it was a great idea to use lead pipes in water distribution. 
NSF call out the risks and help develop safer alternative materials, such as plastic pipes. And then when the U.S. Congress passed the Safe Drinking Water Act in the 1970s, which is arguably the biggest piece of legislation ever passed on water safety, it was NSF who was called to establish federal guidelines for drinking water. Those have evolved to become the gold standards in water safety globally. So whether you're in India, in China, in the Middle East or Latin America, NSF standards continue to be the benchmark for water safety. Now, as science evolves, we stay committed to keep innovating to protect our water systems. For instance, many of our viewers may be concerned with the presence of microplastics in the water. These are scary because they're tiny, you can't see them, but you know they're there. Sure. So NSF is working to address this issue. And as climate change exacerbates the problem of water scarcity around the world, we're leveraging our expertise in water management to support water reuse and conservation. But I have to be honest with you, ensuring clean water for all is a monumental task. So while NSF is committed to be at the forefront of that effort, we do have a lot of work to do. So we're gonna move from water to food. Pedro Sierra talked about uh, securing uh, water safety uh, in the world. Big task, another big task, um, securing food supply. Uh, the chains, making sure they're reliable, making sure they, they're resilient and safe for also for those uh, across the globe. Another huge task at hand, how does NSF go about uh, that effort? Ensuring that there's access to safe food all around the planet is very central to our mission. So we are taking action on many fronts. Some of the things that we're doing very specifically to help establish robust food safety systems in different parts of the world is working directly with farmers and growers, with food manufacturers, and even with governments to develop, to implement, and to adopt food safety standards. Sure. So, you know, you can't uh, turn on a, a streaming platform and not see a documentary about food uh, production labels all those concerns, in particular, large-scale animal uh, production. I've seen a few of those uh, documentaries myself. A lot of concerns ethically, a lot of concerns environmentally speaking. Uh, talk a bit about how you go about addressing those concerns and, and allowing people to feel uh, much more safe and secure uh, about their food and, and production. That's, that's, that's a tough line to kind of walk at times. It's a big topic, and certainly with the expansion of industrialized farming, we've seen a big increase in animal production on a large scale. And we understand that consumers are concerned, and that's why NSF is right there at the forefront trying to address this important topic. When we talk about animal well-being, we like to apply the One Health concept. What that means is we look at it from the standpoint that human health and planet health and animal health are all intrinsically intertwined. And that helps us break down this very complicated topic. One of the things that we do very specifically is we implement animal welfare standards. Um, these help not only improve the quality of the life of the animal, it also improves the quality of the food, and it reduces environmental impact. Yeah. Pedro, when he was talking about uh, ensuring safe water, he kind of walked us from the beginning to, to where NSF is now and, and the future. Let's talk a little bit about the future of securing uh, global food chains. What do you think that looks like for, for your particular assignment? The future of sustainable food is absolutely going to require us to work differently, to work with our planet instead of against our planet. The good news is there are many ways to innovate. NSF is at the forefront of those. We're working, for instance, with regenerative agriculture. Uh, there are new technologies for protein alternatives and all other types of technology and innovative means by which we can feed the planet, but also preserve our natural resources. 
Indeed. Pedro, Sarah, thanks for opening up the doors and uh, opening up the, the playbook, if you will. I, I, I now feel like an NSF expert, as I'm sure those uh, watching do as well. Thanks so much for allowing us to uh, come into your fabulous uh, facility and chat a little bit about what it is you do. We appreciate you. Thank you. It was Thank great to talk you, to you. Thank you, so as I reflect on my conversation with Pedro and Sarah, I do so in the knowledge that NSF, as they celebrate their 80th anniversary, will continue to be at the forefront of efforts to improve human and planet health. Through their plans to deliver healthy and sustainable nutrition for all, they are providing a pathway to a shared future, one we can all be proud of and celebrate.